aeons among aeons among aeons ago, we decided to let there be light on this beautiful world of ours. Now, you might say, all right, that's cool. But how am I going to implement this on my projects, whether it be a Photoshop designer, it's your boy. an artist, a photographer, anything like that. Lighting is very important and it's really good to understand because it brings you to the next level. It really does. Um, but I want to show you guys today that it's really not as hard as it may seem at first. At first, it's like, damn, how am I going to get this, nail this right, use the right blend modes, all that type of stuff. We are going to break it down today. Do not worry. But with that being said, I'm going to show you guys um, how to do rim lighting. That's going to be like the end result of this. But we're going to start with the basics. So let's hop into it. So first, let's just summarize the first principle that I want to go over. I'm not going to like break it down like, oh, you have to do this and that because this is the vocabulary term. No. But anyways, the intensity of light is the first thing we're going to go over. So the on the right is the original picture of De'Aaron Fox. And to the left is him with a low intensity of light, low exposure. And I didn't change anything like the highlights that are actually on his face or anything like that because we're just breaking it down from a basic level. So this is the importance of this and the importance of knowing the exposure and adjusting and knowing what your light source is having for an intensity of light is because you want to be able to match it with your background. So you see in the far left one, bringing down the exposure to match that black background, it fits definitely perfectly versus the one all the way to the right, that exposure doesn't really match. And what I see a lot of times in edits is when you guys will do lighting, it's like I want to put lights on the player, but I don't want to uh, start with the base and you have to start with the base and know what the scene is telling you. So if you put them into a scene, you have to see what your lighting is telling you and how intense the light should be from the get go. Not after you figure out where you want your lights to be. It has to be there from the get go and understand the intensity of light that's in the scene and adjust the intensity of light that's in the scene to your liking. Okay, so now the next thing to be cautious of is the directional light. This is actually really, really important. And first, let's just look from left to light. So where is the direction of light coming from in the left photo? You guessed right, yes, from the top left. And it's hitting them like on, on an angle that's coming down. And um, what you wanna know about directional light is that also you're going to have a little bit of reflected light. Like I didn't do like anything crazy or nothing like that, but you can see on the right side how I have just a little bit of him also lit up because when you have light, it's on one side. It doesn't mean it's only going to be on the one side um, unless it's like a really harsh, harsh light like difference like that can happen. But usually you're going to have a little bit of reflected light. So just understand that. And then on the right side, the light is coming from. Yes, under underneath him, it would be coming from like underneath the side of him. And you can see that because of the the little arc that it has shaped around his body kind of. So you can see that the lights coming from underneath him, lighting him up there. His face would be lit more if it was like straight on, but you can see that the, the light would be a little bit angled. And what you can also do to figure this out pretty easily is if you're stuck or anything like that, just make some shapes and make some light sources that uh, represent where the light's coming from at first. And that's how I kind of learned where light is coming from. With, yeah, with also studying from life. So what you see now on screen is a uh, swap that I did of Ben Simmons, but I really wanted to bring out some nice lighting sources on this piece. And what helped me on this was using hue and saturation and luminosity. And what these do is it helps you to see the true colors of everything that's in your piece, right? Because no shadows are black or white. That's why I really want to stress. No shadows are really black or white. There's always some color involved in there. Um, unless you're like doing like comics or something like that, you might just have black shadows. But with that being said, in life, there's always going to be some color in it. And you can really see that when you um, just do this method that I have. I have the video that I linked it to, but just understand that when you are doing lighting and shading, it's not black and white. And you have to just take notice of that and see the colors that are really going to be in your piece. And you're going to want to implement and utilize the multiply blending mode with a hue of color, um, probably pretty, pretty desaturated, but still there's going to be some color in all of your shadows or all of your light. All right. So something that I do a lot of the time when I want to look at lighting is I'll look at things like some of the favorite movies I like to watch or 
have seen animations always have super nice rim lights and they look cool because of just the characters and things like that so just start taking more notice of the things that you watch and just everyday lighting that you really see in real time whenever you're just wandering around this beautiful earth of ours and we're going to be doing rim lighting because it's just the best obviously but what i break it down as is do matching the exposure picking your source of direction for the light and then matching the color of the light to your subject and then painting on your rim lights and a layer that's beneath that so that you get a little bit of support for those rim lights so the first thing that i do on my subject is i go to pick a color that's going to match the background that's going to be very dark but i'm picking a blue tone color so that i get some of that blue in there and it's not just black and white like we said now i go in with my lasso tool and i'm just making like a rough a rough selection down the middle of the Aaron Fox because I want this to be the split light that I have on my reference that you can see on the left. Now I go in with a soft brush on a low flow. Make sure your flow is low when you're trying to do lighting because lighting is never like a block. So just make sure you do that and I'm just making everything softer um, before I start doing more things. Now I'm just kind of playing but I'm just trying to implement a lot of things like levels and curves and a little bit of desaturation so I can just get him fitting more into like a cool atmosphere because when you're doing lighting you don't really want your subject to be super saturated off the bat especially if it's a split lighting example like this one so what you see here now is me just prepping my light source um, don't be afraid to take samples from the subject that you already have just using your color picker tool and then pick a similar color around to something around that degree and then just test it out in wherever you want your light source to be from all that type of good stuff um, you can start just playing around but make sure your brush is on a low opacity and it's really low and we don't start with the rim lights we're going to start with we're going to start with some cooler not as saturated not as vibrant lights all right so i put a little bit of a light source behind him so i can just see where the light's coming from and it's going to be coming from the top left and then now is the time that you can go in and start doing your rim lights and when you do rim lights i usually put it on linear dodge or color dodge most of the time i put it on linear dodge but when you're doing rim lights really you don't have to rush at all please don't rush at all and just control select your subject so that you can just paint on the subject and you won't get off course from the subject and you can just make really nice selections and you're gonna also see like i paint in a little bit on the chin and then I soft brush it out so rim lights are never going to be super harsh but they are going to be very prevalent so you got to find that really really good balance between the two so you want to you want them to have soft edges but you also want them to be like prominent it's kind of hard to explain sometimes but um, the more you do it the more you're gonna be accustomed to it like it's not something that you're just gonna get in one sitting and be like yeah I'm a pro at doing this now no but Rim lights, put it on linear dodge, you know, brush it, brush it on pretty softly, but on the edge you can go a little bit harder and try to have your edges just look look good. You'll know when it looks good, um, but just take your time with it. Remember that rim lights are not like barricade lights. They don't need to be huge and big and puffy and all that. But what I did here after I do my rim lights is I duplicated the layer and I just put a blur on it. And this is really good and can help you out because if you put your line, your rim lights on a blur layer and then just have just a little bit of Gaussian blur or whatever blur you may want to use, it gives it that nice soft glow. And then from that layer that's on blur, you could just make a layer mask and whatever you don't want to be super bright, just brush it out. Simple. I also use a color balance layer and clip it to my subject or just mask it to my subject. And this definitely helps the light come out just play around with your highlights midtones, shadows play around with all those things that you see on the color balance and this will definitely help think about art more like you're a chef there's always a messy kitchen before a masterpiece comes out and that's the same thing with art you're never going to just get some perfect presets perfect lighting the first time it just doesn't happen and you just gotta work towards it and eventually if you just keep working and working on it you're gonna start to see things come together i promise so on this section you see me just working with the pen tool this is where i talked about reflected light whenever you have rim lights and things like that there's always light that bounces off and will support it so just use your pen tool or whatever so you want to use it doesn't have to be anything precise 
because after this I blend it out but you see I'm just brushing in some areas of light that might be there um, if I'm thinking realistically and just always referring to some of my references that I have so see there's light going on his head there and then I'm just using my flow brush really low on just like low flow all the time when I'm working with with lighting because I don't I don't got to force anything you don't have to force anything with lighting it's just gonna come you're gonna see when it when you see it look good you're gonna know so I'm just brushing that stuff out taking my time making it soft making it light and definitely um, want to make it a little bit lighter than the rim light even though this is gonna be a pretty bright light that's on his face as well now you guys are gonna see me like adding a a light source that also complements the one that I already had and what I did there is just pick a brighter light than the the one that's already on him because you're gonna have a gradient of light like I have there but you're also gonna have your brightest light um, the farthest away which makes sense because I mean if you just think about like the Sun or anything like that the farther the, the closer we would get it'll get brighter and also hotter and melt us that's also what essentially creates the room lights and something to really remember is that the brightest light from the light source nothing on his skin could be brighter than the actual light source that's something that is really really underrated or not underrated but just uh it takes a while for people to understand that but if you understand that just repeat that the brightest light from the light source nothing on his skin could be brighter than the actual light source because that would make no sense because it's there's no way that he could just like light it up more than it is because it's on his skin right so just keep that in mind so now this is a part that you're not really gonna have to worry about in this tutorial but if you guys want me to do like how to add effects tutorials and incoherence with light i definitely can do that but pretty much all i did was i just loaded in a graphic of fog and smoke and then i kind of just colored it in to a similar color that was already there from the Aaron fox um just complementing the light because another thing is you don't want to just add like effects in and not have them like complement the colors that are there because that also just makes no sense <laughs> and it just doesn't really relate to the subject so that can ruin your piece so you don't want to go around just ruining your piece from like a couple simple things that could be fixed so let me know if you guys want me to do like uh, adding a effects tutorial like a smoke effect or anything like that we definitely can get that up on the channel no problem so once you feel really satisfied with your light you guys see i just put a channel mixer on the top on monochrome so i can just check all of the light and this definitely helps like a lot because you can just see everything in its purest like not purest but most basic form so you can just really check your light and then from there i just start like adjusting and adding some cc's things like that cc tutorial is coming very soon um do not worry i know i know uh you guys want a cc tutorial so i'll drop that soon and um it's kind of unorthodox how i do cc i think compared to a lot of people but I think it'll be cool to just see my method and all that type of stuff because I like to use color lookups a lot and then play off of it with curves and color balance. Kind of just do a lot of weird things with my CCs, honestly, but I can bring that to you guys. Let's say if you wanted to add a little bit of glow when you were done and you didn't like the way that you did it with the Gaussian blur, you wanted to add more or take away, just make those final adjustments on your lighting. Also continue to utilize linear dodge, color dodge, all those blending modes that make things brighter and fit in with the scene. Just be really creative in this in the final steps and get the most out of your design that you can after you put in all that hard work. Because what's a good design with, if you just put all in all that hard work and then you're just like, all right, this is it. No, on the last step, this is like the most crucial step. All right, guys, so thank you guys for tuning into the video. Just understand that lighting is a process, but with these steps and this uh, advice, I think that you guys will have a better understanding of how to do your lighting. More videos can definitely come where we can do like just walkthroughs and things like that because there's uh, tons of different lighting matching to backgrounds, all that type of good stuff. So let me know down below in the comment section below and what other tutorials you want to see from me on the page. Thank you guys so much for showing all the support that you do. Until next time, man, stay scoped. I'm out. Peace.